In this chapter, we will take the next step in our database development process and map our conceptual database model to an implementation database model. Let's start with the overview. To set the stage, we will start by reviewing some issues related to database design. We will then extensively zoom into mapping conceptual database models to logical database models. More specifically, we will discuss how to map an ER model to a CODASIL model, an ER model to a relational model, an ER model to an OO model, an OO conceptual model to a CODASIL model, an OO conceptual model to a relational model, and an OO conceptual model to an OO logical model. Although these mappings can be performed automatically by many database modeling tools, it is important to carefully understand the various steps. This will provide a clear understanding of what semantics may get lost or can be added during the mapping process. To conclude, we will also discuss various specific issues related to physical database design. Let's start by zooming out and see where we are now in the database development process. Remember, we started by collecting and analyzing the data requirements from our business setting, which we also refer to as the universe of discourse. Think about an employee or purchase order business process, for example. These requirements were then formalized into a conceptual data model, which was used as a communication instrument between both the database developer and the business end user. As our conceptual data model, we can make use of either an ER model or an OO model since both have a user-friendly graphical representation and as such provide an excellent means for both database developers and business users to unambiguously agree on the data that needs to be stored and managed. As a next step, we can now map our conceptual data model to a logical data model. The logical data model is based upon the data model of the DBMS that will be used for the actual implementation. Popular DBMSs in use today are legacy CODASIL DBMSs, relational DBMSs, and OO DBMSs. Hence, we will discuss how to map our conceptual ER and OO model to a CODASIL, relational, or OO logical data model. Finally, a physical data model is then the actual implementation of our logical data model, for example in a Microsoft, Oracle or IBM environment. We can then also make use of vendor-specific features to further fine-tune our database implementation. Here you can see the process once more visualized. Remember? The conceptual data model is DBMS independent. Its sole purpose is to gather the data requirements of the business process or universe of discourse as accurately as possible in close collaboration with the business user. The logical and physical data models are DBMS specific. The mapping between the various data models is typically conducted by a database developer using a database modeling tool whereby input from the business users is only occasionally required. A conceptual data model needs to satisfy various requirements. It must be able to accurately and unambiguously model the data requirements of our business process or universe of discourse with as few semantic constraints as possible. It must be flexible such that new or changing requirements can be easily added to the model. The model must be user friendly and have an easy to understand graphical representation such that it can be used as a communication instrument between both database developers and business users. Finally, it should be DBMS or implementation independent since its only goal is to collect and analyze data requirements. 
When considering all these requirements and the data models we discussed in the previous chapter, it becomes obvious that only two models are eligible for conceptual data modeling, the ER model and the OO model. Since both of these models also have their shortcomings, it is of key importance to extensively document and list any semantics that cannot be successfully modeled. Remember that the ER model is a temporary snapshot. Hence, temporal aspects cannot be included in the model and need to be written down as business rules. An example rule could state that an employee cannot return to the department of which he or she was a manager before. The ER model also doesn't accom accommodate triggering rules, such as a rule stating that a manager of a department should be warned when the amount of hours worked on a project exceeds the budgeted amount. To summarize, a conceptual data model needs to be complemented with a set of additional business rules, which can then be reconsidered during the actual implementation. Here you can see the key steps when developing an EER conceptual data model. We start by identifying and naming the entity and relationship types. Next, the role names and cardinalities are assigned to the relationship types. Attribute types are identified and assigned to either the entity or relationship types. Key attribute types are also determined and weak entity types are identified. Finally, ER constructs such as specialization, categorization, and aggregation are applied where necessary. It is very important that all these activities are typically executed iteratively in close collaboration with the business user. Also, when naming the various modeling concepts, it is highly recommended to adopt a meaningful naming convention to facilitate model understanding and future maintenance. Here you can see our earlier EER model revisited, together with some example business rules such as, an employee should be assigned to a department at least six months after hiring. Employees should work on projects assigned to departments in which they work. A manager should be informed when the total hours worked on a project exceeds the budget. The steps to design an OO conceptual model are quite similar to those for an ER model. First, we identify and name the classes and indicate which ones should be made persistent. Next, the association types together with their role names, cardinalities, and direction reading arrows are determined. We then identify the attribute types and assign them to either the classes or association types. Key attribute types are defined. Contrary to the ER model, the OO model allows to define methods, which are identified, named, and assigned next. This is followed by modeling the weak entity types using qualified associations. Finally, the OO model can be enriched with specialization and aggregation constructs where necessary. Also here, additional semantics can be written down as business rules. Here, you can see our earlier conceptual OO model for the employee administration. Once our conceptual data model is finished, we can proceed with the next step of database development and develop the logical data model. A logical data model is defined in terms of the data model adopted by the DBMS package which will be used for the actual implementation. Guided by the software environment available, we will map our conceptual model to a codicil, relational, or OO model. 
This mapping can typically be done automatically by a database modeling tool. Depending upon the conceptual and logical data model adopted, it is possible that we either lose or add semantics during the mapping. Obviously, this should be carefully documented and followed up appropriately using application code when the implementation phase is started. Let's start by discussing how we can map an ER model to a Codasil model. This is an example of a situation where a conceptual data model is richer in terms of semantics than our logical model. Hence, we will obviously lose semantics during the mapping, and it is important that this is accurately documented. Before we start discussing the mapping, let's briefly revisit the two key concepts of the Codasil model, record types and set types. A record type represents a set of records. It consists out of data items. Vectors can be defined for multi-valued atomic attribute types, such as email address, for example. Repeated groups can be used for multi-valued composite attribute types, such as physical address, for example. A set type defines a one-to-n relationship between an owner record type and a member record type. A record type can be owner and member in multiple set types. To map an ER model to a Codasil model, we start by mapping every entity type to a record type. Attribute types can be mapped to data items. Atomic or composite attribute types can be directly supported in the Codasil model. Multivalued attribute types can be modeled via vectors or repeated groups. For each weak entity type, we create a separate record type defined as member in a set type with as owner the record type on which it is existent dependent. Every one-to-n relationship type can be translated to a set type whereby the owner and member record types are determined according to the ER cardinalities. A binary one-to-one -one relationship type is also modeled using a set type whereby the owner or member are determined arbitrarily or via existence dependence, whereby the existent dependent entity type is mapped to the member record type. Note that we are losing semantics here as we cannot enforce one member record in every set. Remember, binary end-to-m relationship types are not supported in the Codasil model. Hence, we have to implement them by creating an extra dummy record type, which is defined as member in two set types, whereby the owners are the record types corresponding to the entity types of the end-to-m relationship type. The dummy record type can then also contain the attribute types of the end-to-m relationship type. Recursive relationship types are also mapped using an extra dummy record type, which then becomes a member in two set types. Both set types essentially model an explosion and implosion relationship. Ternary relationship types are also not supported in the Codasil model and need to be implemented by introducing a dummy record type, which becomes member in three set types with the three entity types as owner record types. EER constructs such as specialization, categorization, and aggregation are not possible in the Codasil model and need to be reconstructed using set types, hereby obviously losing semantics. Consider the superclass subclass construct as an example. We could create a record type for the superclass, which then becomes the owner record type in various set types with the subclasses as the member record types. However, by doing so, we cannot enforce that every set contains at most one member, and we cannot indicate the type of specialization, such as partial, complete, or overlap, disjoint. Alternatively, we could also opt to use one record type that contains the data from the superclass and the subclasses. 
A drawback of the solution is that it results into lots of empty data fields. Here you can see the logical CODASIL model corresponding to our ER model for the HR database. The underlying cardinalities are the ones that correspond to the ER model, but cannot be enforced in the CODASIL model. As an example, we cannot enforce that a department should have at least one employee, or that an employee can have at most one manager. These model shortcomings should be documented and followed up during application development.